Hi, so this video goes along with Unit 3. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, two different types of data. Uh, we're going to be looking at vector data and raster data. Um, both Those are the two types of data, the only two types that you can have in GIS. Again, either vector, which is points, lines, or polygons, or raster, uh, which is made up of cells. And we're, we're, again, we're going to look at both here in this video. Um, first off, I just I have ArcGIS Pro open. I've got the world imagery loaded in, and then I've got three uh, layers loaded in from Unit Three: the temp preset layer, uh, the TX IDW ten thousand, and the TX IDW one thousand. And we'll look at those two uh, in a minute. Right now, I just have the temp preset open, and so you can see here, just as I've I've hit the add data button and, and loaded um, loaded that temp precept shape file in again. This this is a vector file because it's uh, it's a point file. Um, the trails, just for an example, would be vector and they're a line, and the states and the springs and racetrack would be vector as their polygons. Um, this is what raster files look like when you add them in. Um, talk about that in a second. Uh, but I've just loaded in the temp preset data and it just looks like um, sort of just a bunch of dots across the US. First thing we're going to do is let's open up the attribute table for temp preset. So we're going to right click, uh, go to attribute table, and as we're looking uh, at the table here, um, you can see we've got a bunch of, uh, we've got uh, rows of data and then across the top where the columns are we've got mean month, that should actually be changed to um, city or name, uh, but this is the name of a city um, in the United States, the state it's in, the FIPS code that each state has, and then we've got something called P01 through P010, or through P10, excuse me, or excuse me, through P12 and then PYR, and we've got something T01 through T12 and then TYR, and then the easting and northing is just, uh, that's the UTM location of each of these stations. Um, so being this is called temp preset, maybe you can guess that um, the, the P stands for precipitation and the T stands for uh, temperature. And so what we're looking at here, and these dots on the map just represent uh, weather stations. Um, and this is the precipitation for each weather station. So this is kind of interesting data. Um, kind of like what, what we learned, or what we have learned in the past, you can manipulate the attribute table. For example, what if, uh, so this is precipitation for every month of the year, and then precipitation for the entire year temperature for the entire year and then temperature for every month of the year and then temp the total temperature for the year. Um, so example, what if we wanted to see which station in the United States has the most precipitation in one year? Well, there's a bunch of ways we could do that, but we could just right click on PYR and go to sort descending. Okay. And we can see here 66.4, and that's Astoria, Oregon. And if we want to see where Astoria is, we can click on this little square right here, and it highlights it in the table. And if we move this table out of the way, we can see Astoria is lit up right here. Okay. Uh, conversely, what's the lowest um, weather station? Uh, what's, what, what weather station has the lowest precipitation? Right click PYR, sort ascending, and 3.17 inches per year. Uh, that's Yuma, Arizona. Okay, and again, we can highlight Yuma, move our table out of the way, and there we can see where Yuma is. It's lit up down there. Okay, uh, one thing I like to point out to my students is. Um, if you were just given this attribute table and it was just, for example, if this table was in Excel and I wanted you to um, pick out what's the 
if you could come up with a pattern of precipitation, how would you describe precipitation across the United States? Um, and all you had to look at was this table. You didn't have a GIS map to look at. Um, maybe just by sorting through this data and looking at the table, you could come up with some kind of pattern of precipitation in the United States. Uh, but it would be pretty difficult. I know I wouldn't want to do it. Um, but we don't have to do it that way. This table, luckily, is associated with a GIS. Okay. And so what if we close the attribute table? All right. And we right click on temp precip. Or excuse me, we just highlight temp precip. And we go up here to Appearance, and we go to Symbology, and we click on Graduated Symbols. And we tell the GIS to uh, symbolize the temp preset data on the PYR column, and we can give it five classes, um, and then so what we have here is the smaller the dot is the smaller precip, the bigger the dot, the more precip, okay? And we can even give these dots uh, different colors. For example, the smaller dots are dry areas. We could give them uh, maybe, maybe like a red or an orange, okay? Maybe the next group we could give orange. Next one, yellow. Next one, uh, maybe a light, sort of a green. And then the next one, maybe a dark, maybe a darker blue. So those would be the wettest areas. Okay. And so now, We've got a pretty good picture of precipitation in the United States. And so now if I asked you the same question, okay, um, if you could describe a pattern of precipitation in the United States, what would it be? And so we can easily look at this map and one could say, well, as you move from west to east, okay, west to east, what happens to precipitation? Precipitation gets bigger, okay? Notice most of the precipitation is in the southeast and in the east. It gets gradually less and less. The mountain states don't have much, and California doesn't have much. The one outlier in that description of as you move west to east, precipitation gets bigger, would be the Pacific Northwest. Um, we can see that you get a lot of precipitation on the west coast of Oregon um, and Washington. Okay, so that was pretty easy. We just, a few button clicks, we um, symbolized our data. The bigger the dot, the more precipitation, and we could easily pick out a pattern. And again, that's kind of the interesting thing to me, or the powerful thing about a GIS, is you can easily pick patterns out uh, using a map and symbolizing your data with different symbols. Much easier to pick out patterns than if you are just looking at an attribute table. Really hard to do if, you, if all I told you to do was look at this table. Really easy to do if you have a GIS and kind of manipulate the data using symbols and colors. Okay. Um, all right, now remember this is vector data. This is points. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, the same kind of data, precipitation data, but we're going to look at it in raster form. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the temp preset data, and I'm going to turn on the this TX IDW 1000 data. So you can see this is data for Texas, um, and the rain. And let me zoom into Texas here. Okay, uh, 
Um, so the range of precipitation in Texas is 8 inches, that's the darker black areas, to 57 inches of precipitation, that's the whiter areas, okay? Uh, let me, let's pick a different color instead of just black and white. Let's click on this. Let's pick something that mo makes more sense, like maybe, uh, this one would be good. How about brown to blue? Right? The drier areas are brown, the, the bluer, uh, the wetter areas are blue. Okay, there we go. So you can see the difference. Now let me turn on the temp precip layer. You can see the difference here is, is instead of just having a dot that represents a certain point, now we have the GIS data representing entire areas. Okay. This whole area around El Paso is brown, so we can surmise that it gets about eight inches of rain per year. This entire area around Beaumont is blue, so we can guess that it gets about 57 inches per year, um, instead of just one dot with the vector data, okay? Uh, is the pattern the same? The answer is yes, you still get the same pattern as in Texas, as with the United States. If you move from west to east, uh, Texas gets, gets more precipitation. Um, and, just, and you get that same, you would come up with that same pattern whether you're looking at raster data or whether you're looking at just vector data, okay? The difference is, is that temp, the temp precip data is vector, it's points. The Texas data by itself is raster data. Now, what do we mean by raster? If we zoom in here where Houston is, okay, you can see what we're talking about. So raster is made up of cells. You can see these these little cells here, okay? They're squares. Um, and what TXIDW1000 means is each cell is 1,000 by 1,000 meters, okay? 1,000 by 1,000 meters squared. And if we right click on this data and go to properties, um, we can pull and go to the source tab, we can pull up a bunch of information about this, okay? The, the units are in meters. Um, there are 1,248 columns in this data. Let me zoom out a little bit. So since this is made up of cells, there are columns in this data. Okay, columns. And then there are also rows, okay? Again, if I go back into the properties, um, 1248 columns, 1181 rows. Each cell is 1,000 by 1,000, and we know it's meters because uh, up here in the vertical units, it gives the units set as meters, okay? Um, spatial reference, it tells us what, uh, again, linear units is in meters. It tells us what projection it's in. Uh, information like that so we get a bunch of information about this raster data okay um, again let me zoom in down here towards Houston uh, Galveston Bay um, this data is made up of cells all right now let's contrast that to we're, we've got this TXIDW 10,000 in here okay so what do you think 10,000 means well, let me symbolize this data the same way as the other. Let me turn it on. Look at the cells. Are they bigger or smaller than the 1,000? Definitely bigger, okay? Each cell takes up more area. Again, you can see the difference in the in the cells. One thousand, ten thousand. So that being said, um, which is more accurate, the one thousand or the ten thousand? Well, because there is more cells per area in the one thousand. Okay, the one thousand is more accurate. 
Notice the difference in the coastline. Look at how, what the coastline looks like on the 10,000. See how blocky it is? Now look at the coastline in the 1,000. A lot more refined, okay? So the smaller cell size you have for raster data, the better, or the more accurate it's going to be, okay? Again, when you zoom out, you can still see the pattern stays the same. Um, it's just there's, there's less cells per area in the 10,000 than there is the 1,000, okay? Um, so just a quick and dirty video on, uh, again, using GIS data to pick out patterns, which is what we did with the temp precip data. And then explaining the difference between vector and raster data. And remember, vector is points, lines, and polygons. Raster data is cells. Um, and then remember the difference in cell size. The smaller the cell size, like with the Texas 1000 data, the more refined or more accurate your data is. The bigger the cell size, as with 10,000, um, it's less accurate. Okay. Um, all right, if you have any questions, please let me know, but there's the vector raster video for Unit 3. Thanks.